in. Greetings. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to the Steve Day Show here live and on demand. But not that much in demand. Nevertheless, we persisted. I am Steve Dace here on Blaze TV radio and podcast alongside Todd Erzin and Aaron McIntyre because, frankly, no one else wanted to be alongside. Coming up on the show today, the weekly prophet of woe and lamentation, Daniel Horowitz, will be here with us. Uh, we'll get to buy, sell, or hold here later in the program as well. I uh, want to let you know that um, there's a little bit of economic uncertainty out there in case you hadn't realized it. And um, and we're in an election when there might be an election year where there might be even more uncertainty. So have you sheltered your savings, uh, your investments, your portfolio, your productivity, prosperity? Have you sheltered them from major setbacks to the economy by diversifying into your old IRA uh, to a 401k in gold or an IRA in gold? Birch Gold can help you do that. As opposed to many other investment, gold gold thrives in times of uncertainty and is an important part of diversifying your savings. So here's how Birch Gold can help make it a part of yours. Uh, They'll help you convert an existing IRA or 401k into a tax-sheltered IRA in gold, and it doesn't cost you a penny out of pocket. You can't beat it. Just text Steve to 989-898 for a free info kit. That's Steve to 989-898 for a free free info info kit from Birch Gold with an A plus rating from the Better Business Bureau, countless five star reviews, thousands of happy customers. Get started today by texting Steve to 989-898 for your free info kit on gold. All right. Wanted to make an announcement here at the start of the show before we get into the uh, the content and what we'll be discussing here on the program. Today, uh, as many of you know, is uh, Ash Wednesday. So we are uh, in officially now in the Easter or resurrection season, if you will. Some of you also know today is uh, Valentine's Day. But um, this was a perfect day to launch my next book. It is the next in a series. I'm doing a trilogy of children's books on America's Christian heritage. And you guys, I mean, were phenomenal. Uh, The response we received to Why Thanksgiving when we released that um, a couple of years ago. I mean, if we're going to start with America's Christian heritage, you have to start where it starts with the pilgrims, right? But now we're going to start way back to the beginning of any Christian heritage. Why Easter? is available now for pre-sale. Jesus died for us so we can live forever. Pre-sales on Why Easter begin today. And the book releases on March 7th. I think you'll be very proud with how it turns out. It tells the full gospel story, goes back through the Old Testament, uh, and takes us all the way to Christ as Messiah, the resurrection, and, and circles back as to why there would not be a country called America without those events and the beliefs that came out of those historical events from the 10 commandments to the resurrection, uh, all laid out here in, in a manner that children can understand and will also help tie them into um, the country that they are inheriting. Should they be um, permitted to inherit it at this point, that's in doubt, but let's assume the best, shall we? And so If we want them to carry on that legacy, what does it look like? And that's what we try to answer in why Easter Jesus died for us so we can live forever. Pre-sales are available at Amazon.com right now. Pre-sales are available at Amazon.com right now. But I wanted you guys, because you guys pay the bills around here. So I wanted you to hear about something first before anybody else. So I've not posted anything about this on social media anywhere. I've not said anything to anybody about it. We have set aside... Uh, of our initial printing, 2,000 copies autographed by me. If you want an autographed copy of Why Easter, there's only 2,000 of these. There's only going to be 2,000 of these, at least as far as I can tell anyway. Um, They're a little more than the regular ones. I think it's about uh, 18 bucks in Amazon right now for the pre-sale. If you want the autographed version, it's 25 bucks. You can get an autographed version of Why Easter by going to Premiere with the E at the end premiercollectibles.com slash why Easter premiercollectibles.com slash why Easter is where you can order a, an autographed version of why Easter at premiercollectibles.com why Easter that is the website there's only going to be 2000 of those though so 
get them while supplies last. I think the burning question here is how long did it take you to autograph 2,000 books? Well, I haven't autographed them yet. They're sending, the, I'm, I'm waiting for the book plates to get into the mail, but I can usually do that. You know, I'll, I'll turn on, turn on some uh, podcast or okay. some Amazon music. I'll get through it like in an hour or so. Really? Yeah. I can sign pretty fast. Wow. Yeah. Again, premiercollectibles.com slash why Easter premiercollectibles.com slash why Easter. If you're like, listen, I mean, I, the book sounds great, but I don't want you to sign it. And I can't blame you for that either. Cause there's only going to be 2000 of those. Anyway, you can pre-order today at Amazon. Why Easter Jesus died for us so we can live forever. Todd, you had a chance to go through this book with me uh, before we sent it during final edits, before we sent it off. You have any thoughts? Well, I think the clever thing about this is, is what you did with, uh, America's uh, revolutionary founding I, I, in terms of what he's trying to do and ultimately fundamentally with these three uh, books make this about who we are supposed to be called to be historically have been at Americans uh, Steve really brings this one home it is not some kind of contrived way to take Easter and America and just have them in a book. I mean, th this thing nails it in a way that quite frankly, I think is going to give a lot of adults a light bulb moment. It, it, we have, we have so turned our American holidays, uh, into, you know, barbecues and things like that. And, uh, our, our nation fundamentally is about, our savior and the the works he calls us to do the sacrifice he calls us to make i really i that i was a really really impressed and i'm used to being impressed by this guy but he didn't he again this is a kid's book i, I guess by now he's done enough of these that, that he enough product goes out could mail it in he never mails it in on this things so he really wanted to get this right for you and your family I mean, we could essentially, thank you for that, very kind, brother. We, we could essentially sum it all up by saying that once the veil was torn and we are now as individuals permitted to boldly approach the throne of God's grace and have individual agency with God through our mediator, Christ, God himself, God among us. Um, once we were granted that individual agency with the most powerful being on planet Earth, the founders came to the conclusion that well, if I could have individual agency with the most powerful being on planet Earth, I should get individual agency from my government at the, at the same that, That's where the yes. concept came from. The, the idea that I could be granted government by the consent of the governed, representative republic, we the people, the idea that I would have agency with a government stems from the fact that they first had to acknowledge that we have agency with God. That's where the idea of individual agency comes from. God makes man and woman in his image, gives them dominion. God calls a deliverer that he gives himself individual agency with named Moses. He, Moses says he wrote the Ten Commandments with his own fingertips is what Moses says. I think it's in Deuteronomy or Numbers. And God hands those tablets to Moses, individual agency. For the law comes through Moses, grace and truth comes through Jesus Christ. And so now that veil is torn. We now have individual agency. You can pray directly to your creator, the most powerful being in the universe, and anticipate that he will listen and maybe even answer. So if I have that kind of agency, if God grants me that kind of agency, why am I a subject of a government, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's where the whole idea comes from, folks. Now, how do I put that in a form that a child would understand, particularly children coming from an era where our schools didn't teach many of their parents those things either, right? Right. So this, this one took a little bit longer than even why Thanksgiving took to write this one. I mean, this one, this one went through numerous, ed even more edits than why Thanksgiving did. How do we distill this down so you could read this to a four-year-old and they would understand it? And I hope we landed that plane. I'm confident we did, but you'll get to decide that now that pre-sales begin today. Again, it releases on March 7th. Pre-sales start today, Ash Wednesday, at Amazon.com. If you want an autographed edition, there's only 2,000 of those. PremierCollectibles.com slash Easter is where you can go for that. Did you want to say one more thing before we moved on? 
No, I, I'm just... Considering how I've seen you write other books, and he, this guy has the ability to, like, like go into a trance and just, like, come out with stuff that the rest of us would... I mean, it would just take months. But I, I'd imagine on this one, you might have had to work a little yeah. differently and harder than you do in the past because yep. it is a, writing a children's book is an entirely different animal just from the number i didn't know the, the number of pages they plot out that you are required to have so yep. you just can't you just can't say i'm gonna I can't write send it this many 75 page children's, page book, children's gotta, book manuscript right. right yeah it's very formal formulaic and it's got to again it's got to be a concepts that their brains at their stage of development can embrace and understand and yeah, this one. Uh, why I told you before why Thanksgiving took more edits than any book I've ever written. This one took even more than though, more than that one did. But I'm very proud with how it turned out, and the illustrations are absolutely beautiful. Uh, so I hope you'll be very proud of it as well. And with that, here's Aaron's rundown of what happened while we were away. What happened while we were away? Brought to you by Look at the Results. New York's special election to replace the ousted Republican Congressman George Santos in its third congressional district was seen by some as a bellwether for this November's general election. Santos had previously won the plus two Democrat district by seven points, and Lee Zeldin carried the district by 10 points in the gubernatorial election of 2022. Last night, the Democrats won the race by eight points. Also, randomly, in another special election in the Oklahoma State House, a Republican there eked out a victory by a narrow margin in a district Trump won by 26 points in 2020. Again, that's in the State House. Learning Chinese today. Today's phrase is look at the results. 看看结果. Learning Spanish today. Today's phrase is look at the results. Mira los resultados. Learning Arabic today. Today's phrase is look at the results. Unzur ila nataiji. Learning Hindi today. Today's phrase is look at the results. Parinam diko. Learning Portuguese today. Today's phrase is look at the results. Veja os resultados. The House yesterday voted to impeach Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandra Mayorkas, proving they are able to at least pass show votes. After all, the vote was 214 to 213. Meanwhile, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell is starting to turn the screws on House Speaker Mike Johnson. McConnell is urging Johnson to pass a bill in the House that the Senate passed earlier this week that gives free money to Ukraine, Taiwan and Israel. Asked by Politico about getting 22 Republicans to join him in passing that bill, McConnell told Politico, quote, I've been in the minority with my members on raising the debt ceiling, on funding the government. There are just some issues that come along that are so important. You just have to do the best you can. As political commentator Rachel Bovard points out, quote, on every major issue, McConnell gets a minority of Republicans to side with a majority of Democrats. He is consistently out of step with his conference. This isn't governing. It's just a constant failure of alignment with Republican voters. Meanwhile, in Florida, Ron DeSantis is cracking down on retail theft. Theft had already decreased by 30 percent since he took office, but he announced yesterday his support for new legislation that would increase penalties for thieves who are caught planning, coordinating and recruiting others to engage in organized retail theft. Why is he doing this? Well, because that's what a non-dysfunctional government looks like. Layoffs at CBS parent company Paramount has claimed award-winning journalist Catherine Herridge's job. Herridge was let go this week from the network after years of relentless coverage of various Biden scandals, including being pretty much the only mainstream journalist to take the Hunter Biden laptop from Hell Story seriously back in 2020. A new exclusive investigation from The Blaze shows the shocking number of deaths caused by Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer's COVID policies for nursing homes and long-term care facilities. You can read that subscriber exclusive now on The Blaze. And finally, the He Gets Us ad that should have aired during the Super Bowl. Don't ask me what you know is true. Don't have to tell you. In case you haven't seen this yet, this chills-inducing alternative to the He Gets Us advertisement was put together reportedly in one evening by British pastor Jamie Bambrick earlier this week. The ad, for those of you listening who haven't seen or heard this yet, features pictures of several Christian converts, former abortionist Richard Dawkins, former right-hand man, former witch, former lesbian activist. The ad ends with the words, Jesus doesn't just get us, he saves us. And a montage of other attributes of Christ's love for us. We can live.
And that's what happened while we were away. That is absolutely incredible. Yep. You know why? Because you know, and I know, and everybody watching knows that is straight up the awe inspiring power of the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. That's the gospel right there. And the guy just spent an afternoon and a couple of nickels when another group of multimillionaires got in a room and came up with that other tripe. I mean, it, there's no good answer. I mean, if that doesn't that. make the hair in the back of your neck stand up, I mean, check your soul straight up. And it's only Valentine's Day, man, but I'm going to call the race pretty early. It's going to take an awful lot to defeat that for clip of the year. I agree. At, on our final show this year. An that, awful lot. That should be the placeholder right now. I mean, I mean that's, that's, you know... Tiger Woods at his first Masters, just blowing the field away, okay? Doesn't mean like, you know, they just stopped playing golf at Augusta National because this kid's got such a big lead, right? But it was pretty obvious you probably weren't catching him. Fair, Mm -hmm. okay? So, you know, good luck trying to top that. I look forward to efforts that would attempt to do so because that is, I mean, that... That's the gospel, man. And and the throwing in of such as what were some of you. I mean, that's just great stuff. Aaron's Montage, brought to you by our friends. Let me click on it again. There it is. At Bonner Private Wines. If you want to check out their Sunai Elogico Malbec uh, from 9,000 feet of altitude and deep within the Kalaki Valley, third highest vineyard in the world. That's just one of the specialities that they have there at Bonner Private Wines. And, you know, it sets this particular bottle of wine apart. Uh, it's highly rated at 91 points, no finding or filtration done when producing it that preserves its true natural taste, boasts a staggering 10 times more resveratrol and 93% less sugar than the red wines you're going to buy, at, even the good ones at a store. And Bonner Private Wines, they're the sole importer of this amazing Malbec. That's just one of the wines in their repertoire. All right. And if you want to get a bottle of that or some of their other wines that you can get up uh, to 50% off, including free shipping, you can't beat it, but you need to become a member. BonnerPrivateWines.com slash Steve. Become a member of the Bonner Private Wines partnership today at BonnerPrivateWines.com slash Steve. B-O-N-N-E-R. BonnerPrivateWines.com slash Steve. All three of us have tried their wines. We all recommended them. Todd recommends it extremely often and highly. BonnerPrivateWines.com slash Steve. All right. Um, to the to the montage we go. And if you look at the... Since it was mentioned in the montage, I, we should address it. Okay. And I, I, I did tweet about it last night. Because it is newsworthy. I have no analysis. None. I, I, I'm dead inside. I have none. And, well, not any that most of you want to hear. So, cool. Keep it to myself. Um, I'll just report the facts. This is a Democrat plus two district. Santos won it by seven. Lee Zeldin, running for New York governor, won it by 10 in 2022. The Democrat overperformed. He overperformed his polling by about nine points, which is right on with the average of what we saw last year, Democrats doing all over the country in off-year special uh, elections and um off-year elections, we saw them, what was the average I think I cited was about nine points last year. He overperformed his polling by nine points, the Democrat did. Uh, the largest part of this district, Queens, um, went from plus two for Santos to minus 46 for the Republican last night. Again, I have no analysis, none. Just straight up numbers. Uh, just telling you facts. Do with them what you want. Not do with them what you want. 
whatever you prefer. Um, the Republican Party, by my account, has only one win in a contested open special election since 2022. And it was the night of the New Hampshire primary when it had a built-in turnout advantage. That's the only one. By my recollection, it's won anywhere in America since 2022. And you can now all commence doing the Spider-Man gif, pointing fingers at each other and blaming each other. I gave that up for Lent. All right. I do with it what you will. Those are facts. I'm dead inside. And we're probably all dead too. So. Get your digital trading cards. Um, let's talk about something else, shall we? Yes. Yeah. Um, Rachel Bovard was one of the, if I remember, wasn't she interviewed in, in the same movie that I was in just separately, right? She was interviewed in DC. Yeah, I don't, she was. Yeah. yeah, that's the first time I'd heard of her. She's really good in the movie, by the way. I, I don't know her at all. I've not met her before. Her, I've, you know, her name's not come up in any conversations with people I know and doubtful that she knows who the hell I am. I'm only saying that because I don't have like, I want you to know, I don't, I don't have a built in, you know, um, either reservation or appreciation for her work. I, I do think her observation though is very astute that what Mitch McConnell is doing is acting out of alignment with Republican voters and that, and, but here's where I would offer, uh, maybe I wouldn't differ, but I would offer some context to Rachel's observation because she also points out that, um, McConnell is getting small minorities of Republican voters just enough to go across the aisle and work with Democrats to get this legislation passed that the average Republican voter is not in favor of. Okay. I, I don't think it's that simple, man. I wish it were. Isn't this a point you've been trying to hammer home your like whole career? Uh, that it's right? always worse than you think? Yes. Yeah. That, and I'm going to hammer that point. Particularly again. on this issue, yes. Yeah, it's, it's worse than, as bad as what Rachel is astutely observing is. That is bad, okay? Um, it's actually worse than her observation. Here's why. Where is the organized effort to replace Mitch McConnell for, for, as Republican Senate leader? Exactly. There, there is not one. It was one. It was one speech by Ted Cruz. That, that was it. Yeah. There's no effort. It's the no same one, place you can find a bat that's uh, capable of uh, traveling hundreds of miles to a specific. To take um, a dump at market. a wet market yeah. in Wuhan. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, it, it, it's not happening. There is no effort. No one's trying to mount an effort. No one. There's no whispering campaign effort. It's nowhere to be found. Why? No one in the caucus. No one else could get the votes. See, Mitch McConnell is not just, man, Mitch McConnell rolled the dice, had no idea how it was going to turn out, and it just so happened that just enough Republicans that the Democrats needed to break a quorum to get these bills to the floor that Republican voters don't want could get passed in the Senate. I mean, he was up there just sweating it out, Todd. Old Ditch was just up there like glitching out as they as they were whipping up the votes and counting them right there and, and you know watching these senators walk down the aisle casting their votes. They don't even do that anymore, by the way. All right, sitting at their desk pushing a button. Those that actually show up. And Ditch is just sitting there, you know, blinking like Rick James after a party at Eddie Murphy's house, completely unsure of how this whole thing. And what you know, guys. Every time they really need something, they have just as they've got just enough Republican votes. <sighs> Take Mitch to Vegas with you. Have him breathe on that dice before you throw that out there on the table. He's just a he's a lucky man, right? Is that what's going on here, do you think? No. Now let me tell you what's going on here. What Mitch is doing is protecting people. He's shielding them. So what happens is they get together. They take a why. Why was Ray Langford? Why was he the guy that drew the crap sandwich? To James, pimp? James Langford. Uh, James Langford. It's, I keep wanting to do that. Dang it, Ray Langford, former St. Louis Cardinal. Why do you vex me so? 
I was even doing that privately last week when we were talking. Goodness. I'm going to blame Joe Biden. Anyway, can you get contact dementia? Can that happen? I think it's We're happening find at the White out. House. Yeah, I know you guys over there on your side believe in vaccine shedding, right? Is there dementia shedding? I think it's viral dementia at the White House. Okay, thank you. It's airborne? Okay. Yeah. James Langford, why was he chosen? He just won re-election. So he's, he's good to go for several more years. And he's in a state that he couldn't lose anyway. And just, they can just buy the primary... And there's no chance of losing a general. That's why they did. It wasn't like James Langford just moseyed into Mitch McConnell's office one day and said, hey, I've got an idea. Why don't we resurrect the exact same immigration plan everybody's hated for the last 20 years? And Mitch was like, by golly, I wish I would have thought of that. Nope. Langford was chosen on purpose. So they get in these rooms and they privately discuss everybody's in everybody's situation. Who's the most exposed? They do the math. All right. Hey, you got to eat the crap sandwich this time. But next time when it's a bill that people in your place care more about will protect and hide you and shield you. That's what's happening here. This is a protection racket. The Republican Party is an incumbent protection racket. It is nothing else. That's what it is. It's a, this is an incumbent protection racket. They already know the outcomes of these votes. And if you move enough liability around it's kind of hard to pin jello to a door when everybody's got a little red on the ledger we can't vote them all out at once can we todd so if you have three four or five people that keep making the crap votes all the time we could target them that even in this environment we could probably target those guys and take at least a couple of them out right but what if it's 20 of them we have the we have the resources as a as an opposition movement within the republican party to do that nope no we don't especially when it's scattered so the next time next time james langford will do something that you love and that'll be just as that'll be just as contrived and coordinated as what happened on immigration last week. That's what's going on. Because, former pastor James Langford, yeah, former pastor. Was he one? Emphasis on the former. Um, but this is why this is this is why there's no effort to out, to oust him. Because there are many more Republicans that wanted to vote for this than actually did. They just couldn't afford the exposure, so Ditch protects them. And in exchange, they keep him where he's at. That's why. The fact there's no effort to oust Ditch shows you he's doing the will of the majority of that caucus. An overwhelming majority. Probably except for six or seven people. Maybe eight. Tops. That's why. They don't care that he's at odds with Republican voters because they are. All they want him to do is protect them from you, the Republican voter. That's what's happening here. Make no mistake. So as astute as Rachel's uh, and pessimistic as Rachel's observation was, it's actually worse if you look at it in its full context. Or we can go back and look at the special election results in New York 3 last night. Todd, your thoughts? It's a some show. Yeah, I. You want to hear? I, you I want the even, hope? There is none. 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 I have except here. This is the only me- hope message left. Play that video again. Put it on loop. That's that's all that's left. There's no other hope, and the system is gone, gone, I, gone, gone. Well, certainly in Kentucky. I mean, they're also their governors, Democrat Andy, who shut them down during COVID. I mean, I, that's what I, I don't know what's going on there, but. In Oklahoma, like they, you, you're people that put Ryan Walters and he's going to be on the show next week. If, or is there like, are you, my thing about running, can that be your thing about living under Jane Langford and voting for him again? Like, are you just going to stand for this? Yes. Even just, in Oklahoma? Just yep. so we don't make it easy for media matters. You're talking about the empty tomb, not buying your book. And you say, uh, gosh, yeah. Do, you, yeah. do you think that required being cl- clarified? I just don't want to make it. Abigail at me I, matters. Uh, yeah, what, uh, Audrey, what's yeah. her face? Is it Aubrey? I don't well, know. Yeah, what's her nuts? I don't know. Time is our most precious commodity. It's the one thing they're not making more of. And 
if you want to use your time wisely to improve yourselves, people around you, um, the prophet says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Hillsdale wants to do something about that, whether it's history, economics, the great works of literature, the meaning of the U.S. Constitution. Chance are you didn't study those things in school. Um, and maybe even if you did, it's been so long you could use a refresher. Well, they can help you with that at Hillsdale. Uh, they're offering more than 40 free online courses in the most important and enduring subjects. You can learn about the works of C.S. Lewis, for example, the stories in the book of Genesis, the meaning of the U.S. Constitution, the rise and fall of the Roman Republic, which you're living through a variation of as we speak. Uh, so if you want to know what's going to happen next, Hillsdale will show you that. Uh, so if you are interested in even learning the history of the ancient Christian church or more, these are just some of the online courses Hillsdale has available for you. And they are free. Can't beat it. This is service to humanity level stuff. Uh, go right now to hillsdale.edu slash Steve to enroll. Hillsdale.edu slash Steve to enroll. No cost. Easy to get started. Hillsdale dot edu slash steve to get started i might take one or two of these actually i was i actually did uh, several years ago did you yeah it was i mean it was quality it was very very high quality expect nothing less from hillsdale i know we just uh, you know announced um the new children's book but i had an idea i had an idea earlier today for a book for just a few minutes you guys indulge me before we get to buy some hold just tell me if you think this is just nuts. Okay. Uh, um, imagine like a dystopian future where a country only has two political parties. And um, one of them is just like completely given over to evil, like out in the open. Just out in the open acting on things and saying things that are crazy, insane, evil. No previous generation of this once great society would ever dare say these kinds of things out loud, regardless of their uh, political persuasions of the eras that they, that they lived in. But this is now all out in the open. And then the other party um, ended up going from being dominated by greedy, materialist, cowardly, feckless, um, corrupt, but I repeat myself, um, corporatist from the Aaron Burr school of government that government only exists to line my pockets kind of a thing. Okay. And, and what rose up to replace them, I'm, I'm trying to think of, you know, um, I haven't, you know, laid this all out yet. I, they wouldn't be called this in the book, but for lack of a better description, like basically white trash. All right, just total white trash, um, gullible, easily manipulated. Um, we'll do things like donate to billionaires because they're supposedly in desperate need. Um, um, uh, you know, take like retirement funds and go to the casino all day and dump them in nickel slots and leave nothing for their children and then go home and, and the rest of the day and watch a channel that absolutely hates them in their value system but will will, but will do everything that channel tells them to do anyway okay and um and 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 all the while believing that they're like the 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 god-fearing truth tellers of whoever the you know the deity will be in this like mythological world i'm creating um and and all the while like this this manifested evil on the other side just keeps on going and is not opposed. It's not stopped. And and so all they do is destine their children to essentially live out like a Black Mirror episode for real. You know what? On second thought, I, don't give me don't give me your opinion on this, guys. I mean, that's I'm just I'm in a mood. I, at, at times, you know. My imagination conjures things of the fantastical nature, and um, I, I shudder even contemplating putting a story like that out into the ether. So, let's just forget the whole thing. Did you say something about gullible there? No. Okay. Yeah. Um, you want to hear this story? 
You know how the Senate passed that bill earlier this week to fund Ukraine and Israel and Taiwan? You remember that? I do, yeah. Yeah, and then Mike Johnson said it's dead on arrival in the House. You remember that? Good mm-hmm. times. And he's no, this, so this right. isn't. This is like a real event you're talking about. This is a real event. Yeah, just to close the loop on that, I'm sorry I even brought that up. So finish what you're going with, because this is real life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Earlier this morning, statement from the House Intel Committee, U.S. reportedly faces a serious national security threat. Serious. Serious national security threat. And Mike Turner, Congressman Mike Turner from Ohio, is calling for the Biden administration to declassify some elements of this national security threat so that Congress can see it. Uh, A few minutes later, U.S. intelligence official has reportedly told CNN the national security threat is a highly concerning and destabilizing Russian capability. Of course it is. I'm calling BS. You remember when I said Mitch McConnell's turning the screws on uh, Mike Johnson? This Mm -hmm. is what that looks like. That's why I just to go back to what I was. There's no point in even making up such stories. (laughs) Do not. Do just, you know what? Do this. Put one bullet in the chamber, spin it and hand it over. All right. There's no point even making up such fantastical tales because the reality of the world we live in, Aaron, that you just mentioned. You just can't make this up. You can't make it up. So I I shouldn't even attempt to make stuff up and embellish, you know, situations. And I don't even know where that came from, you know. So let's get to buy, sell, or hold. Enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, Let's get to buy, sell, or hold. Maybe you should go out and wash your tranny's feet and you'll feel better. (laughs) Should I? Yeah. (laughs) I really want to pick up where you're laying down, but I'm going to let it go. I think I've think I've done enough today already. Uh, this is where Aaron has propositions from you in the audience. Uh, he has selected them. Todd, you and I will decide which of these we're going to buy, which of these we're going to sell. Um, if you use your hold for any reason whatsoever, um, you have to wash Lindsey Graham's feet for a new commercial called He Gets You. (laughs) I tell you, there's some laughs laughs there. (laughs) That's like, uh, (laughs) compared to the rest of this show, I'm... (laughs) We might just have something. I couldn't even get the whole sentence out. I saw the looks on their faces. It was of such despair. You, if you were in this room, the t- I can't even see Aaron's face. The temperature literally just dropped like 30 degrees. Todd has this look on his face. Of, of just, uh, every just other Lindsey Graham joke I've had in despair. Is, every other Lindsey Graham joke up till this point, I've had the option of touching something <laughs> far worse than his feet. I things are looking up. <laughs> I got a headache now. All right, um, Aaron, let's go. Are you sure? You yeah. might fire me after this first one. Oh, gosh. Or Todd might fire me into the sun. Uncomfortably Dumb says, deep down inside, Todd firmly believes Steve is an idolater when it comes to sports. <laughs> <laughs> buy, sell, or hold, Todd. I'm going to buy. I'm going to buy. <laughs> I, haven't I made this clear? Yes. Steve is the rare breed. <sighs> you... To be an idol. Does... Is, 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 is Steve's testimony diminished? Is the reality is his love of his love for Jesus 
and the stripes he's earned on his back over and over and over again for decades now i don't for his own emotional well-being he could probably take his foot off the gas a little bit but other than that i i thought i'd made myself clear over and over and over again i'm sell if you do if you are steve without jesus which a lot of you are and a lot and you're or, and or you're not doing anything about the things in this world then then we have a problem but i don't you this is it's not a joke we we have fun with it but it, it's not a joke what i find fascinating about it is the pushback you get on this is sports is like a fifth child in your family i mean it has your your family is heavily invested in athletics has yes. traveled all over the country yeah. to be involved in athletic endeavors it's been central to the Erzin family experience has been participation mm. and in that's sports. what i'm trying to save i'm really trying i'm not i don't want it to go away I, 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 what else do i need to say to make this clear you guys are all ruining out there with your idolatry i'm trying to save how this taps into the good true and the beautiful i desperately am I'll watch Rudy and I'll get a tear down my eye. You know, it is. I, I went to professional umpire school. I became a professional umpire. I don't, I don't know what more I could s say to just make it clear though, but you can't, you can't turn. You've got two anything. daughters playing yes, NCAA sports they're, they're at different both, universities they're both right playing now. playing college sports, but yeah. you, you can't turn this into what obviously many of you, including many of you Christians are unapologetically trying to turn it into you you can you'll destroy it by trying to turn it into you and you'll also destroy yourselves because that really is an idol you you have absolutely taken this above and beyond anything you would do for your lord it's clear you can't be bothered to do anything there so that that does that paint this man in any way shape or form it does not it doesn't even come close he was just down there at the Capitol with me. He didn't have to go down there. Two minute speech. This guy gets paid to fly across the country and give hour long speeches. He went down there for free and gave a two minute speech because he believed in the cause. Have you gone to your school board meeting? You try to don't you threw this boomerang out there. I'm going to make sure I throw it back at you <laughs> 10 times as hard. Don't be stupid with this. It's serious. There's no greater idol blinding a lot of Christian men these days. If you're watching six football games, you have just upped the ante way up on what you need to be doing for the Lord. Are you meeting that bar? Are you? All right, let's get serious for a minute. <laughs> Matt Wells says, brothers be flipping. <laughs> I, I no, get the, the brothers be flipping. That's why pat, I don't need to get up off the couch. Pass the gun and, back. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> why do I? Why do I get the sense after watching Aaron's montage and looking at the first two submissions that Aaron sensed how broken I was looking at that New York special election result last night, and just decided oh. I am going to freaking trigger the old man at maximum warp. He wakes up and chooses violence. There's yes. no doubt about that. Yes. He, he's that gif of that that girl giving the side eye. Meanwhile, like the house is burning down behind her. You know, the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Aaron on many days. Yeah. What can I say? It's my spiritual it's gift. His, oh, yes. I'm not presenting it at all. Uh, Aaron Reality. No, I'm proud. I, I want to make that clear. <laughs> I'm extremely proud. Yes. Go ahead. Aaron Reali says certain people were taken off this earth when they were in part so that they wouldn't disappoint us on big issues. Examples of Mr. Rogers or Steve Irwin potentially wow. becoming simps for the spirit of the age. <laughs> Praise the Lord. They're dead. They can't disappoint. Us. <laughs> and you know what? He's probably right. <laughs> to he clearly didn't get to Phil Vischer fast enough. <laughs> oh my gosh. We freaking lost the Veggie Tales, dude. That still blows uh. my mind. It does. 
Chat GP. When I found out last year that Phil the VeggieTales <laughs> guy has gone straight up like Rob Bell, it blew my mind. <laughs> I mean, that, those, I mean, we were at the Wellspring Christian Bookstore here in town opening day for every freaking VeggieTales when our kids were little. It was a, that was a major event in our family was the release of a new VeggieTales, man. I miss Wellspring. I, I'm just. That was that, a fun place. That felt like my, my kids got robbed. My kids, my kids childhood got robbed. Finding out that Phil Vischer has just gone insane. Yeah. Um, I will say this. The most prophetic and perhaps unintentionally, meaning it wasn't a direct quote from the scriptures or intended to emulate specifically a biblical thought. Okay. The most unintentionally prolif- or, or prophetic line I think that's ever been inserted into the dialogue of a film is in the dark night when Harvey Dent says you either die the hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. I mean, I, I think about that constantly. I, I, you see in the biblical narrative how few men finish well. Because they get comfortable. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I thought about this even going down to the legis- legislature the other night. I mean, I'm going to run into another trans terrorist. I'm like, you know, that's a lot better way to go out than let me way outlive my usefulness. My wife's changing my diapers. I've disappointed my kids. I've gone soft. I, at least I'm going out that way in the field of battle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because therefore, by the grace of God, go I. I mean, David, David goes from the king that unites the 12 tribes to an old man who hands his son Solomon a kill list on his deathbed, man. Nobody f- who finishes well. Very few people finish well. Very few do. All right, we'll come back. We'll see if we can finish well, but don't count on it. More buy, sell, or hold is next. Back here with Hour 2, live and on demand on Blaze TV, radio, and podcast. I'm Steve Dace, alongside Todd Erzin, Aaron McIntyre, and all of you. And you can let us know what you think about what we think via the SteveDace.com inbox by emailing us, Steve, at SteveDace.com. That's D-E-A-C-E. Like us on Facebook, me, we, and Gab. Follow me at Steve Dace Show on Twitter, get our Instagram and TikTok. And you can also, if you're a podcast listener and wouldn't mind, leave us a five-star review if you dig the show. Thanks to all of you who have. You can also hit subscribe, or if you're on iTunes, hit follow. That way, every time we do a new show, it shows up in your feed every single time. You don't miss one. And you also don't want to miss out on our friends over at Relief Factor. So many people, too many, suffer with a lot of chronic pain. This is the kind of pain that comes from too much inflammation in your body. And often you deal with this pain by taking medications that just kind Kind of mask the pain while making you drowsy, maybe have other side effects. So some doctors got together one day and said, hey, what if we could come up with a drug-free supplement that went after the inflammation in the body and didn't just mask the pain so that the cause of the pain was being dealt with? And that's the origin of Relief Factor. Over the years, over 1 million people have tried this. And 70% of them have seen such great results with the three-week quick start They stuck around with the product long term. Why not see if you don't see a difference in your pain level in three weeks or less when it only costs you 20 bucks to do so at relieffactor.com. Get the three week quick start. Just try it for 20 bucks. You never know. 70% odds that you're the next success stories. Relieffactor.com. Again, that is relieffactor.com. All right, let's get back to it. Big stakes this week on buy, sell, or hold. All right, you want to make sure you don't use a hold if you do. You already know what's going to happen. You are washing Lindsey Graham's feet, and he gets you. I survived that first hour. All right. Let's let it roll. We we have a late breaking submission here. Uh, This is from Recoom Boom. Is it snotty? who, Who says, Todd is so triggered. Todd, my sports ideal is not idolatry. Yours is. Dace Views 
dude send more? Do you have any idea what he's trying to communicate? I, I, have you thought about... Um, Literacy? <laughs> have you thought about just going with every third letter? Seeing there's a hidden message on the inside. T-I-S-T. Uh -huh. So, t uh, mm. No? Yeah, I don't think so. It, does it say, drink your oval team? <laughs> if you do that? No? I don't know what he's saying about Steve, but I know what he's saying about me. And I, it, it's true. My ideal is much, much better than yours. <laughs> Correct. It's, it's uh, and objectively so. It's better for the sport. It's better, better for your soul. You nailed it. I, and I'm probably better than you in most other ways as well. Oh my God. The nebulous you, or, or is this directed directly at Mr. Boom? Next year for Lent, Todd's going to give up self-confidence. <laughs> All right, let's go. Here we go. 20 Years Gone says, considering Senator John Kennedy's rhetoric versus his actual voting record and stances, he's basically just the hee-haw Lindsey Graham. Absolute buy. It's, it's a total joke. This is, this is another guy that we've turned into a thing on righty media for his folksy quips. And then he just goes up there and does, he doesn't just show it leg, spreads legs for the spirit of the age, man, over and over again. I mean, so it's a, you get a folksy clip on Fox News tonight. Just like when Lindsay, remember Lindsay was going to get to the bottom of it on Hannity's show every night. Remember? Yeah. Okay. You get a folksy clip. So we went from Lindsay getting to the bottom of it on, on Hannity's show every night to now we get uh, John uh, Kennedy on there with his folksy quips. And then let me say, let me tell you what quip he get, what quip he delivers when he gets into the uh, rotunda there and starts voting. Hamana, 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 hamana. That's the quip. All right. Just absolutely taking it for the spirit of the age. You bet. So that's right on the money. Cash money, homie. Right there. Bye. Yep. All right. We go to Pat Oney. Steve and Aaron should show up at Todd's house with lightsabers to challenge Todd <laughs> to a duel of fates. It would be the most epic soap opera for men. <laughs> I love that idea. I'm in. Oh, I would, I would go into Aaron and Steve mode. Not answer the door or get the Aaron, hell off one my day, lawn. One day, we're not even going to say anything. Yeah. All right. I used to, we used to have this teacher that traditionally at Rogers High School, which doesn't exist anymore, and I love this man, and he passed away several years ago. Mr. Pugno was the government teacher. And so every senior class had a history of trying to outdo the other one with senior pranks on Mr., in Mr. Pugno's class. Let's just say, man, I took that thing next level to the point that one day he pulled me aside and he told me, he talked, he, he talked like this, he talked like that, all right? And he said, days. One day, you're going to get a ch your own chapter in my memoirs, is what he told me, all right? And one of the things we used to do uh, on Friday nights, you know, after a basketball game, is we'd drive out to his house in Kentwood is where he lived, another suburb, and we just all just start playing basketball in his driveway, hanging out. He'd come home and stuff. We're just all sitting there playing basketball. <laughs> Hey, Al, what's going on, right? We should do that, Aaron, to Todd. <laughs> One day he just comes home, all right, and you and I are in the front yard. Having a light this is what, see. <laughs> he might actually These are the us. guys, the, this is, <laughs> these are the guys. We're even making the sound effects. Hey, you can get lightsabers that do all that for We're you. We're both sitting in robes. Yeah. We've got the robes on. So he doesn't know who it is at first. I'll bring um, I'll bring a Bluetooth speaker. We'll, we'll have <laughs> the soundtrack going. The two introverts who don't even get up most times to answer their own door would absolutely Facts. do this. Facts. Would get up, move heaven and yes. earth. Like I will say, leave my house and drive to Carlisle for this. Tell the wife yes. and kids I'm booked all day. Yes. I gotta go trollers, and we're doing this. Yes, that would happen. Absolutely, that would happen. You bet. Yes. Uh, Mr. T says Cadbury caramel eggs are better than Cadbury cream. Bye. Bye. And by the way, every year when I recommend these, I start tomorrow. We got to see the, Christmas can start as early as it wants, as far as I'm concerned. Everything else, though, I'm, I'm in Urza. It's got, it has to be in its season. Today's Valentine's Day. All right. Easter starts tomorrow. OK. And whenever I talk about the Cadbury mini eggs, this is a very, very important distinction. All right. If you remember nothing else in today's show, please remember this. Um, <laughs> I'm not talking about the cream eggs, the big ones, you know, with the, with the I'm, I'm talking about the little, the little ones in the purple bags are the absolute greatest mass produced chocolate of all time. Cadbury mini eggs, not the cream eggs. Just want to clarify that. It's very important. Okay. And 
<laughs> and yes, I, I, I've not had either of these products very much, but I, I've tried them once and I would agree the Cadbury caramel egg or caramel is better than the, um, the cream egg. Agreed. Bye. Next, we have parenthetically, this is actually Lent, and like as with Christmas, Easter starts on Easter, and then it's a it's its own season afterwards. But are you letting sh- did, did, eat the right chocolate kiss? <laughs> did you get did you let the girls have um, peeps in their Easter baskets growing up? I mean, my wife was in charge of that. I don't remember it being verboten. But I, what about I, in your house, Aaron? Peeps that going to be allowed? Yeah, I think we had peeps every now and then. Did, Amy and I, with no way. Because they're, they're just nasty. No, though. Okay, yeah, they're right. absolutely nasty. I mean, I, and the green grass in your Easter basket, I I put a kibosh on that. That's the you, plastic you, green. Yeah, because then you, you you end up vacuuming that stuff <laughs> the, the, well <laughs> well into Labor Day weekend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this this is what it's called. That is Steve. Davis. Leading your house. Household and the, the ways of righteousness and That's truth. That's right. Our theme this year is dominion. <laughs> no plastic green no grass. Plastic no plastic grass. No grass. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, our kids, are, well, they'll tell you, they've never had plastic green grass in, the, in their Easter baskets ever. Their entire lives never happened. Not once. No peeps and no plastic green grass. Never happened. <laughs> you, t- you were so serious when you said that. You're like, I... <laughs> Uh, yes. I even interrupted the program to bring to bring up this point yes. of order. Indeed. All right, let's go to something. You um, want him on that wall? <laughs> let's go to something uh, with a little bit more levity and, and less seriousness. Uh, Brian Snyder says the Republicans in the House make their election year stand and hold the line. It, indeed. Should I even? Yeah. yeah keep no. Reading? Yeah. Bye. Uh, I mean, sell. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. You lost me at hold the line. Yeah. You lost me at hold the line. I I, this rest? show has a set a high bar in the past for declaring that nothing matters, but this particular version on Valentine's Day... It is quite possible the most serious conversation we've had this entire program is the one where we just discussed why we don't have... Our kids never had plastic grass in their Easter baskets growing up. Next, we go to John. We get some real accountability out of the Florida grand jury investigation and appropriate prosecutions happen. I'll, I'll buy it. He deserves that benefit of the doubt. He keeps hitting pay dirt. So, I mean, he didn't say they'd be found guilty, but prosecutions happen. I think he's got an appetite for that. Absolutely. DeSantis. In this, I, I almost wonder if this is more about, does his attorney general have that an appetite for this? Because they're the person who would have to bring those. Um, I, I definitely think there will be some accountability. I don't know if there'll be criminal prosecutions. I do think at a minimum there will be some kind of a lawsuit filed against the federal government for fraud uh, or filed even against the uh, the pharma manufacturers for fraud, okay, um, on, a, on a governmental level. So I agree with the spirit of it. I don't know what the specifics will be, but I agree with the spirit of it, so I'll buy. All right. Moving on. A lot of talk about Todd this week. Uh, Big Gulp says uh, he's got a top 10 list of most likely song titles found on the Todd Erzin Band's debut album titled Black Mirror Oracle. I'm just going to read all these. You wholesale buy, sell, or hold. Uh, Prove Me Wrong, God Shaped Hole, The Lie is the Point, Hail Hydra, No Mercy for Groomers, Soap Operas for Men, Nebulous You, Nar- <laughs> Narcissistic Drivel, Invincible I- Ignorance, and Trans Equals Terrorism. Those are all song names on the t- Todd Erzin bands. That is somebody that gets album. you, dude. That's really yeah. cool. You should enjoy that. That's I really very much enjoyed that. That's a, that's, wow, that's, that's, a, a, that's a t-shirt. That's a sonnet to you. Yes. I'll buy that. That's well done, brother. Good job, Big Gulp. I found my place in the world. I Indeed. like it. Dominic, we found, we found your fan. Dominic Wet Bandit says Biden legitimately getting 81 million votes is more frightening than if it was rigged enough for him to get 81 million votes. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That's true. 100%. It is. It goes to what I, it goes to my own epiphany over the last few months. What is more frightening than a cabal of secret elites running the show that nobody is? That's even more frightening. That's kind of what, that, what he's saying here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I, I have, I, I would buy that hundred percent. I would buy that because if that's, ne- that's nefarious plot stuff where if, if we're that corrupted at the individual level, 
the people are the problem. the people are the problem then there's yeah. there's no comeback from yep. that it's revival or nothing yep. or as someone once said it's revival or bust yeah yeah agreed Next up, we go to James Miller. He gets us should have been a slogan for promoting nefarious movie and not a commercial for the validation of sin by misguided wealthy supposed Christians. I like it. Yep. Bye. Bye. Yeah. yeah. Mookie Duke says, I suggest you not talk about any college or professional sports or the mainstream entertainment industry. These are a part of the devil's playground and are constantly promoted on your show. Let's stick to the important things. I would want to know what what are the important things that we should stick to because that's what I've always said about you, Steve. You never talk about important things. <laughs> uh, it's been I mean, said often. My goodness. If I had a nickel for every time, don't give your kids the plastic grass in their Easter baskets. Your vacuum will hate you for months. Stop wasting my coattails. I, I, here's the thing in all seriousness, Mookie, the most influential platform for communicating ideas is pop culture. The most Influential people in the culture are pop culture influencers. I mean, to, to not address that arena and discuss it and what's happening there. I mean, I. That, that would almost be like, like, imagine if like a generation sent their kids to like government schools. And let all the, and let them educate like 90 some percent of the kids and with like no oversight at all and had didn't, you know, check out what the curriculum was or who the teachers were. I mean, could you imagine like what a generational disaster that would be? Just throwing that out there as an example. OK. Moving on. See, I, I don't think that people who say this understand this goes back to the very first one. How if you're going to say this. And is this the, his real name? Mookie Duke. No, it's not. I, it's a cool name, okay. though. I kind of like it for but, a handle. Yeah. A, well, a, you're anonymous, so step out into the light. And B, you're, the bar that you set for your own life, you know, better be Michael Jordan jumped through the gym. Because I, it, to, to say that we are wasting our time on a lot of fronts and ruining a lot of good things uh, you, you, amen but d does you other, other than saying that does your life look exactly the same as everybody else on the cul-de-sac to see that's the problem that's the problem you're getting it wrong it it it, it, it is nothing to, sports and a good movie good stuff i if, mean if I mean, you've just if you've anointed these things to the point that they draw Every ounce of energy, emotion, scheduling, your technology, what you spend your money on, but you simply can't be bothered by anything else. That's where we get into idolatry. The fact that those things can and should be fun, that's not an idol. Agreed. But hey, just to, in, in, in deference to Mookie, in, in different iterations of this show, we would have had conversations like, you know, and not not buy, sell, or hold internally amongst ourselves. You know, how we rank the Marvel movies, the Star Wars movies, yeah. things of that nature. It's very clear, given what's become of these franchises and 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 why why that's become of them, that they're not necessarily worthy of that level of deference. And so we're still discussing them, analyzing them, but we're doing more from a cultural impact worldview standpoint than fanboying them. So that's our way of acknowledging what you're what you are talking about. But oh. to just completely vacate that arena where you know via this device right here it's the most influential idea arena of ideas in the culture i i just completely disagree with that certainly we can be uh discerning in how we do so but judicious uh, yeah yeah but to abandon it i just don't think that's a good idea at all and i but i to the extent i agree i don't watch star wars or marvel anymore be, and i think to that degree we share uh, common purpose because it, it it's it's mostly dreck or actually uh part of the darkness so yeah in terms of being discerning but in terms of like just forfeiting the entire playing field i don't steve's movie's doing a lot of damn good for people abandoning culture is actually how we got here correct yeah, yeah yeah that's how we got here abandoning our kids to government schools is how we got here 
um, abandoning our churches to guys who wanted to build financial empires instead of and make a name for themselves as opposed to people that wanted to proclaim the greatness of the name of Christ uh, and be prophetic in their ministry, how we got here. The, the operative word here, abandoning. abandoning Men abandoning their families, how we got here. Uh, mothers abandoning uh, their femininity uh, and believing that they could be just like men, but with vaginas, how we got here. Uh, should I continue on? Brock Purdy gives a perfect uh, interview, uh, a perfect description of who Christ is today to Sports Spectrum a few weeks ago. We're just supposed to ignore that because he plays in the NFL. Last May, Harrison Butker, the Chiefs kicker, tells his alma mater at Georgia Tech during the commencement address, hey, your number one goal in life should be to get married and have kids. Yep. That's where you're going to find the most fulfillment. Super Bowl, a pretty big platform. We're, we're just supposed to uh, abandon, we're just supposed to forget about that because he plays in the NFL. Yeah. You're supposed to wield these things for good and not, not even getting into the fray is how we got here. Ready to move on? Ready. Uh, Room for Gray says uh, he's got a list of the most thought provoking movies. What a follow up, Aaron. Movies did you do this? On, did you do this on purpose? And two thousands. Let's um, <laughs> let's say that I did. Okay. Um, number one. Actually, let's start at number five. Eight millimeter. For all the wrong reasons. Yeah. Eight I, millimeter is a disturbing watch. I've, I've still never seen it because. When it came out, I saw what it was about, and I yeah, like, it's, a, it's a disturbing taken. watch. Yeah, I, I only saw it once. What is I, it? So, um, it's patterned after a George C. Scott movie that I've never seen called Hardcore, where George C. Scott is like this uh, Calvinist Christian in Grand Rapids, Michigan, single dad, and it sends his daughter off on like a school field trip to California, and she basically defects and tries to become a movie star and ends up in the underworld of the porn industry, and he needs to go get a private investigator to find her and get her out. All right, this is the plot line sort of of eight millimeter but this is a dad looking to see what happened to his daughter and now we're going even beyond just hardcore porn into the snuff film arena okay and um joaquin phoenix has one of the all-time great movie lines uh, he's kind of the the guy that w- helps him navigate nicholas cage's dad navigate you know this uh, arena and he says hey you know be careful going down this road because when you dance with the devil the devil don't change he changes you meaning that there's no way to get this level of exposure to this kind of depravity and have it not stain you you know mm. you can't just look at it clinically next number four frailty Never heard Phenomenal of it. film. I love the fact you put that on your list. That's very well done. You you would love this movie. You would. Frailty is uh, um, Bill Paxton play and Math is in, and Matthew McConaughey are in this film. Okay, mm. Bill Bill Paxton plays a dad who is convinced that the Holy Spirit is 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 giving him terrible people that just need to be executed. And he's in, he's he's and he is incorporating he incorporates his two sons into what he views to be a ministry. Okay, they're, he, they're helping him. You know, they they look out for cops. They help scrub crime scenes. Okay, and and essentially he just gets names in prayer and takes them out. Like and and you know, and then you find out. I won't spoil it. You find out later on if it's real or not. It's a phenomenal huh. film. Yeah, it's it's very interesting. That's a great dude. That is a if you're pulling that movie, I'm impressed. Know well your done. movies, maybe. Yep. Uh, number three, seven. I, I mean, yeah. that's an obvious one. And yep. by the way, Collider comparing Nefarious to Seven last week yeah, blew be. my mind because that was actually one of the films we, we were trying to emulate in tone when we all got together and started, you know, making the story and. Um, so thank you to Collider for putting Nefarious in the same class as Seven. That was extremely high praise, especially for a Christian film. So thank you. Number two, Castaway. I didn't quite understand this at first, but I think he's right. I like, I, thought you... the, I think it's way overrated. I, I would not put it on the list, but I love the fact that you put Feraldi there so much that I'm going to excuse it. But I, I thought Castaway was entirely forgettable. I mean, it's just what would you do if you were if you survived a plane crash and ended up on a on a desert yeah. island and like then i would what, put a movie like the green mile i think is far more thought true, provoking true. than than that film is for example and that's got tom hanks in it too mm-hmm. Todd, any thoughts on that okay i um, like the movie number one i do as well number one shawshank redemption i mean it's it's considered by many one of the 10 15 greatest films ever made in any era yep. so i'm i'm okay good with list it. yep it's a good list overall for sure well done Another list, this is from Go Bucks and Cancer Sucks, uh, has the top five movies turning 40 this year. Oh, boy. Number five, The Karate Kid. Wow, Todd. Mm. 
can look at this list. Wax on, wax off. Show me sun the flow. Paint the fence. Yeah. I and like it's it's have you seen any of the uh the Karate Kid show? It's it's been in my Netflix queue for like three years. Uh, I have not gotten no. around to it yet, but I hear people rave about it. They love it. It I was gonna be like, oh god, you're you're gonna destroy this. I, they can't it'll be woke it. as hell. Right. It's I, I, it doesn't take itself seriously, but it also honors the story. Somehow they manage to... Now, it's it's, it's now, a this little... Is Johnny, Johnny's the, is kind of the sympathetic figure here, right? He's down on his luck. Well, they're definitely... They're co-equals now. Okay. Um, right. But I I just can't believe they pull... It, it's, it's a little too... It'll bother you. It, it's more crass than it needs to be. Okay. Um, more mouthy than it needs to be. But other than that, I mean... It still somehow grabs onto the innocence while being really, really funny all the time. I'm, it's yeah, and it all pends back to that. It that's like a, I don't care what I'm doing for the rest of my life. If I'm channel surfing and Karate Kid is on, and I can sit and watch it, I'm on. Next, we go to Beverly Hills Cop at number four. There's a there's a new one of those yeah. coming out. I'm more, yeah, I'm concerned. You but should be Beverly Hills Cop three, the one at Disney World. Awful movie. Never seen it. It's terrible. Never seen it. Yeah. Number three, Red Dawn. Wolverines. Yes, Freaking love Red Dawn. And it's love that movie. Like an educational film yes, right it, now. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's a how to. Yes. It's a DIY. Yes. <laughs> just just, just saying. DIY. Yes. Okay. N- yeah. no, number two is Ghostbusters. Yeah. Uh, Red Dawn is now on like the, the HG channel in between like uh, uh, housing startup shows. I'm sorry. What was it? Number two, Ghostbusters? Uh, yep. Yep. Uh, no. Amy and I went and saw, like, they had a 35th anniversary five years ago. They re-released in theaters. So we thought it'd be cool to go see Ghostbusters in theaters. It was pretty dated. It Ghostbusters? Was. Yeah. Oh, I mean, the interaction on. between the cast is still top-notch, but the, the special effects and stuff were oh. like, wow. They look really ancient. Yeah. It's a classic. And number one, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. That's an unbelievable list, man. Purple, that, Purple Rain came out in 84. Footloose came out in 84. Those are 40 years old now, too. See, this is... That used to be Hollywood. I, fun. The Natural... Know, it, one of my all-time favorite films, The Natural, came out in 1984. Look at that list again. Oh, courage, uh, bravery, good against evil. You know, it... Nobody's stupid inner child was being... Um delved into way beyond anybody's level of interest it see it was it just this is it was in its proper place everybody understood what it was and then everybody else been you know did the grown-up thing just can't do that anymore next up the sniper bbb says biden will have more changes in power of attorney this year than speeches at campaign oh, events. what a great yes. bye that's that's a smart take Wow. Loved it. Bye. I like it a lot. That's well done. Dacey and memes for unvaccinated fiends says Alistair Begg gets us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, okay, that's, that's funny, but let's it, not it memify Alistair Begg. Yeah. I mean, the guy is still, no, let's do it. D- no, the guy, the guy dude stepped on a rake and then doubled and, down. And okay. Then double, and then double know, down. Is the, I know, but I still kind of think you, there, if, if, you're if, the one who said the greatest line in the movie. It's, it's the I Batman know, thing. I know. I know. But I also think we should acknowledge that there are decades of faithful service there too. We did. Okay. All right. But it's Ash Wednesday, man. Repent and believe in the gospel. <laughs> that is brutal. That is a brutal takedown, man. It is. Yikes. Uh, next up, sorry, this is not on the screen. This is from David Geiger, who says Travis Kelsey should make a public apology for his behavior on the sideline during the Super Bowl, uh, bumping into Coach Reed. He is probably a role model from, for some young people, and he should make it clear that what he did is unacceptable. Yeah, y- yes. yeah he, but he, listen, I've said this. Incredible talent. And every one of our teams that we cheer for, root for, blah, blah, blah. It's like, do we really know who these people, which makes a lot of the energy we give it absurd because they don't care about us. And a lot of them, you know, are not people we'd have watching our kids. But he's just a giant clown. Forget Taylor Swift and anything. The guy is just a doofus. I I think what's gone, and and hey, that even by the passion and um, 
T level of a of football is not something you typically see. We, you we, never ever okay? do that ever. You don't. I mean, that, that's not. I mean, you will see coaches. You know, the worst you'll often coaches see can is, do that to you. Yeah, but you never do. Yeah, that to the you. worst you may see even in the NFL is a guy yelling at a coach as coach as he's as he's walking away and another coach jumps in and says, "Hey, man," and cooler heads prevail. You know what's gone underreported? What a badass just level of composure Andy Reid shows oh, in that moment. Oh, my goodness. Do you know he, what I'm saying? Has he gone public and said anything about that no, at all? No. Nothing? Because no. he's a good coach. You know, that, that that's why. We'll handle it internally. And But for the level, I mean, this is this is the biggest stage in the world, the Super Bowl, and that happens. And Andy Reid just is, you know, just cool as the other side of the pillow, man. I mean, that you want to talk about power under control, meekness, what that means? That was an example of it right oh, there. And you want to change my attitude about sports bros? Here, to the point. How about you, Kansas City Chiefs fans? How about you demand that of him? How about you say, hey, we're proud to be Super Bowl champions, but we're not total sellouts. You need to apologize. How about you do that? Nothing wrong with that. Demand it. Yeah. All right. Next, we go to Below Amped UT, who says digital currency is not simply to control your spending. Rather, it's so the feds can see economic trends in real time, and then the insiders, the data, and then send the uh, data to the insiders, and the swamp can front-run the stock market even better than they currently do. Well, that is an incredible point. Do you see what he's saying there? Okay. I think so. Because we have access, a central warehouse of, of data of what you're spending your money on, that we would have an idea of whether this IPO will take off or not, whether this stock will rebound or not, Okay. That I hadn't even considered something like that. Yeah. But you know, I've never. That's another. I, these have been some smart takes this week, man. That's another one. I'll buy. I've never fully trusted digital currency. I just don't see how it's as foolproof as people. Well, he's talking about a central bank digital currency, not an independent one like Bitcoin. Right. But, right. but this is my. I don't. Independent of what? Like, have we? Are you looking at the world out there? What do we get to? We don't have a. We think we have a constitution and a border. I mean, if it turns into the Wild West, why, what sacred island d of immunity do they sit on for their special digital currency? Mm -hmm. I don't get it. Mm -hmm. All right, when we come back, we'll be joined by the weekly prophet of woe and lamentation. Stay tuned. Hey, make sure to check out our colleague Sarah Gonzalez's new show, Unfiltered. She's one of our faves, did a fantastic job on our year-end days group, and we got a ton of reaction to that. I was just on her show last week as well. Uh, she is now hosting Sarah Gonzalez Unfiltered right here on Blaze TV or the Unfiltered YouTube channel, or you can listen wherever you get your podcasts as well. You don't want to miss it. Um, and... She's huge fans of this show, but don't hold that against her. All right, check it out. Uh, Sarah Gonzalez, unfiltered. You will not regret it. Speaking of colleagues of ours that are unfiltered, that certainly would describe our guest here today. The weekly prophet of woe and lamentation. He's, hold on, he's got to fire off one more blast <laughs> before he can talk to us. There he is, Daniel Horowitz. Good to see you, brother. How are you? No, I was, I was, Steve, I was just trying to get to the Nancy Mays, Tim Scott rally in South Carolina with MAGA. So um, I was just trying to figure out which side of the coin I'm on. So there's the make America gay side. And then there's the, you know, I got to show up to the prayer bre breakfast late because I'm with my, you know, whatever. My shack so up. I'm just trying to figure yeah. out which one it's at. It's South Carolina, brother. It's the most conservative red state in the country. All right. We had a couple of special elections last night. I want to I want you to give us your analysis on on both of them. Um, I can't. I did not see that coming, honestly. I was like, OK, well, let, let, the shrimp on the Bobby. First of all, let's before we get to the two specific races. There's an overall trend line here, and every time there's there's always an excuse for every one of these. This happened, the snowstorm yeah. last night. There's this, <laughs> that. I mean, the 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 MAGA mayor, mayoral candidate in Franklin, Tennessee, was you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, a, a net, I mean, there's an there's an excuse every time in my Twitter feed. The problem is there's been like 20 of these. 
I, I went back and looked. I could only find one contested open special election that Republicans have won since the 2022 midterms, and it was in New Hampshire, the night of the New Hampshire primary, when there was a massive built-in turnout advantage for Republicans. Democrats are averaging overperforming in these races by nine points. Last night in New York 3, let's start there. The Democrat winner overperformed his polling by about nine points. Um, This is a plus two district for Democrats. But Santos won it by seven points. Lee Zeldin won it by 10 points in the 2022 gubernatorial election. Last night, uh, Republicans lost by eight. So that's a 15-point swing. Um, What's going on here, Daniel? What happened in New York last night? Well, I mean, I think you're right to bring this up in the context of every other election they're losing. Obviously, you could say, yeah, it was some random milquetoast Republican against a pretty popular, well-known Democrat, yada, yada. But but here's the here's the bottom line. If the polls are right, which is essentially the entire strategy of our movement, that the polls are showing Trump will win all 57 states. You don't get results like this when you have Democrats on the wrong side of 80-20 issues. By the way, at the epicenter in in Queens, New York, of the dumping ground of illegal aliens, right after Biden has been exposed as totally senile in front of everyone, you don't get this during an unpopular Democrat. One of the polls in that district had Biden at a 32 percent approval. Okay, so you're finding the same theme that is defying political science. So Republicans have met with this resistance in 2017, 2018, but they, they were in the, in the White House. So the other side is kind of more um, intense in the off-year, off-season special elections. But what's defying that is that once Biden took over, with the exception of Glenn Youngkin in 2021, every single election since then, 2022, 2023, Virginia, Kentucky, they even underperformed in Mississippi. They lost, obviously, getting crushed in anything in Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, including Supreme Court elections. And then every every single um, special election. So you had a Pennsylvania, Bucks County. Bucks County is exactly where you need to improve upon if you're going to ever hope to carry Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. And it was a district <clears throat> that Biden did carry by by about 10 and Republicans lost by 35 last night. In in our plus 29 Oklahoma district, Republicans only carried it by five, and that's the second Oklahoma special election I've seen in recent months where they've underperformed. What this shows is two things are going on. There is an inveterate macro headwind against Republicans that despite everything that's going on, they're, they're just not winning. And I don't just mean like, New York City suburbs. We could do without that. Okay, you don't need to win that area. And frankly, without Lee Zeldin on on the ballot, they probably would have lost it anyway. But a number one, it's not a nineteen. Meaning that Santos had Zeldin had the coattails to carry Santos in twenty in twenty twenty two. Is what you're saying? Win that district by ten. So it doesn't bother me so much. Um, but A, it does demonstrate this is not the 1984 poll- polls are correct. But B, they're losing like Edmond, Oklahoma City suburbs. OK, so so now we're losing every city in every red state. Forget about the swing states. I'm talking about Oklahoma City. I'm talking about, talking about Boise, Omaha, Chattanooga. But now we're also losing some of the suburbs around the red state not even large cities, like mid-sized cities. So that's a problem. That's not a 1984, 88. That's not even a middle ground. That's more like 1974 Watergate or 1964 dynamic. That's what each election is showing us. So the notion that we could just sit back, have the lowest common denominator of Trump's baggage and the GOP impotence, uh, do nothing to actually score points on actual issues and demonstrate that you're doing something for the people and just hope that the polls will carry us to victory is just insane. I want to give you an opportunity to respond to some of the things I am told in my feed when I report these uh, special election results. All right. Um, we don't need suburbs. 
Um, we're going to uh, compensate for that with rural voters. And, you know, we're making historic inroads to minority voters um, who are who are, you know, uh, I can. I almost can't even say some of this stuff with a straight face. But but let's do it. Uh, they're <laughs> Todd. Stop. I'm trying. <laughs> okay. Um, they're they're leaving the Democrat plantation. And what did Matt Gates say a few weeks ago? We're going to replace uh, white girl in the suburbs with more Julios and Jamals or something like that. Okay. Um, because this was a this was a pretty white and affluent district. That's true. It only had, I think, I looked about four percent black population, seventy percent white. One of the richest district congressional districts in America. Um, so you know, is is that happening? No. no? But it had a lot of Hispanics. It, it wasn't it very did, black, yeah. but it did have a lot of Hispanics yep. on the queen side of the district. Yep. And they they. They Republicans lost, lost that by 46 points, that part of yeah, the district. There, there yeah. was no, no, and, and none of these elections is there evidence of this. You know, Trump is planning on holding a rally in, in Bronx, New York, you know, because why hold it in the Wow counties or, or Gwinnett Cobb counties in Georgia or Maricopa County or Clark County um, or Washoe County in, in, in Nevada, where, where the election will actually be won or lost or Bucks County in, in Pennsylvania, Erie County. Uh, we're we're going to hold it in Bronx. So I, I looked up to see how Trump did. And he truth is, he did improve upon his margin by a few pr- points in the Bronx in 2020 over 2016. Um, you know, it was, I don't know what he lost by a margin of 55 or something, whatever it was. But then I looked back and he got the same margin George W. Bush did in 2004. So even the small minority of, you know, a couple points that they're moving in in the black vote, a lot of that is an oscillation back to pre-Obama just because Obama squeezed out an extra few points. Now, even if it's a one or two jogs to the right in that demographic beyond that, it's not making up for, A, the numbers of white voters they're losing, but also the quality of those voters. And what I mean by quality is where they're spread out over the map. Here, Here's something nobody's talking about. So – Republicans were at the peak of their dominance in districts, meaning legislative and congressional districts during Obama's presidency. Obama was able to squeeze out enough extra minority votes to often win statewide, but they were very confined to urban areas. The whole thing, Hillary won 16 percent of the counties in the U.S. in 2016 is what you're saying. That era of Republican dominance. Why? Because. They were able to confine Democrats to the cities, which often got a lot in a popular vote statewide. But you would have a dynamic where even in a blue state, Republicans would control the legislature in a swing state like Pennsylvania, Wisconsin and Michigan. They would have super majorities because the Democrats weren't spread out efficiently and Republicans were winning suburban and rural spread out dominating over the states. And then at a federal level. They got to 248 seats in the House, and they were actually putting more potentially on the board. Right now, they're at 219, and if you look around, they're stuck. There's very few they could put on the board, and and the few that they could challenge and will, for every one, Dems are already very strongly challenging some of the ones they sit in. So these are the the districts at like 205 to 250 – that or even 190 to 250 uh, yard lines in the House map that they're fighting over. So maybe you're going to lose the kind of 300 to 435 by one or two points less. But but that's that's the cha- the exchange that they've uh, given up. And then this is before we get to the fact that Kavanaugh uh, left us with a parting gift and gave the Democrats a few extra seats that they're going to wind up getting because of um, he created a right for the Democrats. Uh, con- it's in the Constitution that they can maximize the black vote, uh, you know, to to maximize the the Democrat turnout. So um, th- that's the reality. I mean, we could talk about the culprit. The why. But let's get the what straight. This is not like, oh, Democrats are going to get crushed. And we've done this for so many cycles. The polls say one thing and the Democrats win another thing. There's an inveterate headwind against them in in a lot of suburbs. That's number one. And number two is they have built this early voting mail in ballot dynamic that was built off of Trump's stupid covid policies. I'm sorry. That's what it was. That Republicans have failed to meet on the battleground in any competent way.
so this is going to keep happening. Okay. It has nothing to do with any particular race. Okay. I agree. These are more systemic is what you are saying. So the other thing I hear is, well, this is their ballot harvesting operation and they can just turn that thing up on game day and get whatever they want. I do think there's quite a bit of truth to this one, honestly. Yep. But then my, my follow-up question to that would be, what has been done? I mean, the, the, it's, it's, the, it's the Trump movement, to their credit, that has exposed this. Okay. What's, what has that movement done the last four years as he's been ramping up for another run to compete with that? What, have, can you think of anything that is being put in place on our side anywhere in America in a meaningful, contested place we have to win, um, a, a commiserate ballot harvesting kind of an operation like that, that that we are doing? And if we're not doing it now, is that something that could be done, you know, July through November in, in the thrust of a general election campaign? Is that achievable? So there, there is one area where Republicans win the early mail-in voting. You know where that is? Hmm. Yeah. Are we allowed to mention it yet? I, I'm not oh, sure um, what the rules yeah, are. Um, yeah, yeah, he's he's mentionable it's very again because he's 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 not on he's not competing with uh, Cheeto Jesus. So you are again permitted in our industry to talk about the accomplishments of Florida. I I've seen so, I've they've mentioned him on they mentioned him on Fox News now almost every morning when I'm at the gym. Funny he was never brought up when he was actually running. So yeah, it's it's okay so, again. Yes. So it's interesting how electoral viability and success. <clears throat> You know, implementing proper ground game also tracks closely with implementing on issues. You know, so he just announced that they're not just going to tweet law and order, but they're actually going to make it a felony to have retail theft and even porch piracy, people stealing off your porch. Yeah, it's not a big deal. Just, you know, what do you care? But it's a big deal for the people. So he's delivering for the people. Oh, and by the way, Politico just a couple minutes ago put out here. Florida's immigration crackdown is scaring patients away from seeking care. So the pregnancy centers are are. Um, bringing fewer uh, anchor babies out. They literally talk about this. So, yeah, I mean, results kind of beget results. And, you know, another thing that's important to realize is that your normie typical voter doesn't understand how our government's corrupt. So they look at what's going on around them and they think that, well, if this is going on, it must be true. It must be correct. It must be virtuous. Hence, Democrats didn't debate for a year if we're going to go and ban human breathing. They're like, we're going to do it. They just started doing it. So the normie was like, well, I guess you got to do you got to do this. It's the same thing in reverse. You can't just talk about something and then make it unpopular and not actually do it. You start doing it and implementing and the voters follow. And that's what you need to do in red states. But, Steve, to sum up, what we're confronted with is this. We can't win at the 50 yard line in American politics. We can't win the House anymore. We can't win the presidential election unless something changes. But. At least in red states, we're going to run up the score, right? Nope. We're going to continue to elect and nominate the same sorts of Mitch McConnell Republicans to every position in every other state except for the state that you weren't allowed to talk about all last year. I've got a minute here. Could they post-convention put a competitive ballot harvesting operation in place in time for impacting the general election? Is, is that an achievable no. objective? No, I, I, I really don't think it is because a lot of it is built off of digital analytics. I mean, that that's really what the Democrats have just – I mean, look, yeah, you, you got to – to be fair, <laughs> they had government agencies helping the DNC develop this. So mm -hmm. it's not exactly a fair fight in that respect. Uh, but, I mean, these meaning, guys – Meaning that their analytics, science. they're connected peer-to-peer. -peer. They're going directly to people that they think are open to voting for them and handing them ballots. They're not just dro lit-dropping these things yeah. and, and neighborhoods, and people are, are organically filling them out. Quickly, go ahead. That's what you mean by I, that. I had that in Maryland. In Maryland, they mail it right to you, um, and that's what they're doing. But, but remember, it's not just Maryland. They now control Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, uh, Arizona – uh, you know, uh, Nevada, really, you know, at least the secretary of state level. So they have control of this. Look, any Republican would have a hard time mm -hmm. going up against this at this point. Mm -hmm. That's what we need to realize. Mm -hmm. What is the plan to do something different that we've been doing since 2017? Seems like a question we've asked a few times on this show the last year. Yep. So what's the plan? Good to see you, my friend. Thank you. See you later. You bet. All right, gentlemen, we've got about 30 seconds here for your final thoughts before we sign off. It remains staggering. I know legislation was proposed here in the Iowa Capitol recently uh, to handle this election stuff, but the fact that we're still doing this 
just on that issue alone, are we serious about anything? I think what he said there about the analytics aspect of it, <clears throat> it's, it's not just enough to put ballot boxes in churches, for example. With, that's not what the Democrats are not just spraying buckshot here. This is a, a data analytic. They're, ballots go to the places yes. and the people specifically that where they know that those are folks inclined to vote for them who otherwise may not show up at the polls. That This requires legwork, preparation, it's seriousness. It, it, it requires more than a, a, a post on a social media company. Romans 828.